Hi, I'm Wilhelm, and this is a re-recording of a talk I did at the React.js conference in Gothenburg. And it's called uh, Bringing React to New Places, or Reconciling the Metaverse. So I work for a company called Hyber. We've been working on the multiplayer 3D web since 2017. And to date, we have nearly 5 million worlds created. Our claim to fame is a um, custom cross-platform game engine and a, a platform with a no-code tool that lets people yeah, make uh, 3D worlds with uh, no coding experience required. This is um, our main product, hyperworld.com. And um, yeah, so I'm Wilhelm Bergeren. I've been at Hyber since 2020, and I haven't quite made that many worlds, but uh, a couple. And um, I'm pretty much a web developer, full stack. So our current product has this thing called Create Mode, which is a no code no code tool. For creating these uh, 3D worlds. It's um, got built-in multiplayer and there's hundreds of available assets. Now there's one problem with uh, the no-code way of doing things is it's hard to scale your world into something bigger. So as you saw here I was placing down trees and yeah it's good but what if I want to do something bigger? If I want to place down a thousand trees, then it's going to take a thousand times as long as placing down one tree. Uh, but if you're a developer, you probably know that if you want to do something a thousand times, you just write a for loop and do it a thousand times. Um, if you want to make yeah any change to a bunch of things, then you just uh, do it. You don't need to go back and erase things and uh, place them down again. It's so for certain larger scale things, code is good. And um, yeah, so we went through a few revisions in designing a, a code tool for creating these worlds. Uh, the first one was very um, class oriented. You can see here it's uh, verbose and it's like we're instantiating classes and other things um, it's a bit hard to read but it's it might be fami familiar to somebody f of a certain background uh, another thing we tried was uh, something more data oriented so you had these functions which um, r returned plain JSON objects with a few methods available for chaining uh, and this was a step in the right direction but um, we noticed that it became quite hard to keep track of the hierarchy of a larger world but then we tried uh, using react as the underlying uh, framework or um, way to structure our code and it worked really well uh, some benefits include uh, a more declarative style as opposed to maybe object-oriented. Um, we could steal the conventions of the existing React ecosystem, so components and hierarchies and um, the way you'd structure your React application in uh, on the web or in uh, React Native. You could think the same way um, in these 3D worlds. And of course, if you already know React, then it all became quite easy. Uh, there's much less to, to learn and figure out. So, yeah. Um, I think a lot of us think of React as this uh, web framework, but in fact, React doesn't know anything about the web. Um, it is 
pretty platform agnostic. So React DOM is um, the way in which React communicates with the browser. But of course, there are other ways to use React, such as React Native. Um, you've probably seen uh, React 3 Fiber, which is great. It wraps uh, the 3.js library and has a certain amount of primitives. Um, and you can see here with some code, you are able to produce this interactive cube example. There's also React PDF, which takes the primitives from um, the PDF file format and um, lets you create things with uh, React. Now, this last one is maybe a bit silly, but you can create uh, JSON objects with React and JSX. If uh, you strongly prefer that to just writing objects. Um, but basically, you've got properties and arrays and values, just like um, in JSON, but uh, you're sort of declaring them um, using JSX. Now, the underlying uh, way that these libraries work is they use reconciliation, which um, yeah, is what uh, lets React communicate with a host platform. So like we mentioned, React DOM is a reconciler for the browser, React Native. I think React Native might be more complicated, but it's basically a reconciler uh, for different host platforms. And that's what um, our new product called HDK is about as well. And in this case, the host is the Hyper 3D uh, game engine. Now to make these reconcilers, you use the React Reconciler package, which is an official React uh, package. And what you do is you um, decide on some primitives. So for the web, there's, of course, divs and uh, p tags and spans. Um, and in our case, we just have one primitive. It's called h node, so hyper node. Um, and the next step is to declare your host config, which is the configuration object that you pass into the React reconciler. You create, you um, sort of describe, you map what React is able to do to what your host platform is um, able to do. So creating an instance of something or appending a child to a parent or you know, lots of other things. And uh, this worked out quite well. So using React as this description language for creating 3D worlds, uh, made it quite approachable, I think, uh, from somebody who is not from a game development background. It's uh, so simple, even a web developer could do it. <laughs> so just to give you a bit of a demo, uh, we've got our docu documentation page here, which sort of goes over what, um, what we're about, what HDK is, and here, is an example of embedding our engine on a page. So this will spin up a um, game server and load in a world that's been created with HDK, the hybrid development kit. As you can see, we have uh, videos, we've got animations, there's lots of stuff going on. This is a world we made for a um, a band. Uh, yeah, there's videos. Here's a spaceship. <laughs> I just fell off, but um, yeah, pretty fun. So if you want to get started, go to the getting started page, installation. So uh, I'm going to show you using our tool in Stackblitz. So this is what um, you start out with, 
we've got this uh, ground, we've got water, so I'm just declaring these components in a quite natural, reacty way. Here's an island, a sign, a wall, yeah. And then I'm just putting them all together in this world component. And at the end, I just pass it to our render function. And that's going to start up the engine and start populating it with the uh, things we described in our code. So with just these um, few lines, we've made this nice environment with an island, this uh, animated platform, a nice cherry tree, uh, this beautiful water texture, and it's all in our sunrise uh, environment. If I want to try to change something here, I could, for example, uh, look at this wall component and replace these cliffs in the background with uh, houses. Very cool. Let me scale those uh, down a little bit and rotate them in the Z direction by 180 degrees, maybe move them up. So now we have these upside down houses in a circle. Let's get a few more of them. Perfect, this is, this is what I want. Uh, so you can see, yeah, we're just uh, declaring our React components. We're using the primitives that I mentioned earlier. And um, yeah, you can see how this scales into bigger and more interesting worlds. So if you want to try this yourself, uh, as you saw, you could go to our documentation and press uh, the Stack Blitz link or run npx create htk. So yeah, that's what I have to show for you today. Thanks.